Uh, my first experience with clay, well, probably my first experience doing any kind of art was at uh, like you know, middle grades of uh, elementary school, uh, which was a Catholic school in Rochester, Michigan. And uh, we, we had a huge playground. We had no organized sports. I didn't have any of that until ninth grade in public school. But uh, we found these old sandstone bricks or you know something like that uh, that were buried in the ground. We could carve those, and uh, so every uh, break we took, we would uh, go out and uh, grind on those and make some cool stuff, you know, characters, or cars, whatever. Then in high school, uh, I had. Uh, I was a fairly uh, rowdy high school average student and uh, I was uh, wrestling with this guy in the hallway uh, in uh, right in front of the art room and uh, a teacher, Miss Maccabee, uh, came out. She was small but she was a tiger and she grabbed me and pull, pulled us apart and said, you need to spend your energy in a more constructive way. You should take one of my pottery classes. So uh, I dropped French uh, and took uh, a ceramics class and uh, I just fell in love with it. It just it came kind of easy uh, to me and uh, it was uh, uh, fun. There's two girls in the class, uh, one of whom I'm still in touch with and uh, it uh, went from there through uh, two years of high school and uh, I would do demos for parents night and stuff like that and it was a uh, treadle style wheel that I learned on which is kind of like an old sewing machine you had to push this bar back and forth uh, it's called a leech uh, treadle wheel which is an uh, English potter an art leech and uh, then I went in the Marine Corps for three years uh, because I needed to have a little discipline in my life. Uh, I'm the youngest of five kids and four girls ahead of me. Maybe I was spoiled, I don't know. Uh, my youngest sister is eight years older than I am, so um, that was kind of an afterthought or something. <laughs> it's a miracle. Uh, so my parents were in their 60s when I was in high school, and uh, uh, they were more like grandparents, so. I ran them a little ragged, uh, so I went to the Marine Corps in 1969, uh, got through it okay, threw some pots, uh, I was stationed in Hawaii, and they had a nice little uh, hobby shop there on the base, and actually threw and fired some pots uh, while I was in the Marines. Got out, went to a uh, junior college in Michigan, Oakland Community College, which had a great uh, art department. And, ceramics department especially. Did that for a year, learned a lot there, how to fire kilns and uh, mix glazes. Then went to uh, Grand Valley, which is now a university over on the west side of the state. And uh, met a, a, a woman there that eventually moved out here. And then I eventually moved out here after two years at Grand Valley. And uh, the department there was okay. It was, uh, I was at that point leaning towards psychology and art. Uh, transferred out here, tried to get an apprenticeship with uh, a woman, uh, Frances Senska, who used to teach at the university and is kind of credited with uh, bringing ceramics to Montana during the 50s and 60s kind of a resurgence in the uh, craft movement at that time. And she advised me, uh, no, I don't need an apprentice, uh, go to college, young man. Uh, hmm. They have a perfectly fine art department there. So I did. And uh, had an instructor, Rick Pope, uh, was the main instructor at that time. And uh, so I took classes every semester for two years and graduated in 77 with a degree in uh, art and uh, art, ed art education K through 12. Taught school here part time and then kind of eased into pottery uh, 
making halftime uh, at the art center, which was uh, oh, behind what uh, Wells Fargo Bank is now. Um, we had a bar in there, and it's, uh, I believe, a lawyer's office now. And it was called the Ketter Art Center, and uh, it was private. And they had a studio and a high fire kiln outside, a gas kiln, which uh, uh, nobody's uh, replaced that in any of the art centers uh, since then. So I was making my own work and teaching classes at night uh, there, and uh, was doing some craft fairs at the time in Missoula, Bozeman, um, Great Falls, I think Livingston starting to get my name out and showing at this gallery and trying to figure out what kind of uh, pottery I was making. And then uh, at a craft fair, uh, the holiday festival, the arts, uh, that still happens in Bozeman around Thanksgiving at the fairgrounds, uh, a gentleman from what was in TWA services uh, running uh, the concession in Yellowstone. Um, so they uh, were contacting various artists, woodworkers, uh, uh, painters, potters, and just checking around. They had a kind of a mandate from the, the park service to get more local crafts in the stores and, if possible, demos. Um, so they contacted me, said they wanted, to, they liked my work, and would I consider going down to Old Faithful and setting up a, a studio. And I was, you know, young, two years out of college, uh, married by then uh, to the girl I met in Grand Valley. Um, and we had a child on the way uh, in 1980. Um, so that summer we moved down there. Uh, before that I gave them the plans, I gave them drawings of kiln, uh, layout for the uh, shop I needed. And uh, I needed water, I needed 220 for a kiln. And materials to build a gas kiln and uh, they agreed with it all which was uh, quite a bit of money um, so that first year 1980 I spent part of the day building a kiln outside the gift shop at Old Faithful Lodge and uh, uh, in the afternoon uh, or mornings depending on the day uh, I would throw pots uh, in the gift shop and uh, little did I know, I thought I signed a three-year contract to start with because I wanted some security, uh, committing to building a kiln and all that. Um, and that turned into 27 summers um, and another kiln. I had to move the original gas kiln out of uh, the courtyard behind the lodge and uh, move it down into a cabin for safety concerns after they added on to that and kind of enclosed the courtyard so they couldn't get a fire truck in there anymore. So I built another kiln, 1988, uh, down in uh, the cabin area by the lodge, and which I thought uh, was, you know, I'll use it for a couple more mm -hmm. years, but it ended up 20 more years. We had great experiences with our kids. Uh, one time uh, we had a cabin at Old Faithful Lodge just uh, across from the Firehold River, and uh, it was a great place uh, to hang out uh, for the kids. They could jump in the river and uh, play around. One time my son opened the door, which had no window on it, opened the door, closed the door, and uh, it was morning. He looked up, and there's a bison uh, like four feet from him, uh, just grazing in the grass around the cabin. The door was locked, and he had to slowly slide between a tree next to the door and around the cabin and uh, experiences like that uh, were numerous. Uh, one time uh, in the fall a group of uh, bison, uh, females with calves, with yearlings, kind of surrounded my glazing and kiln room uh, after I moved the kiln and sat there uh, grazing on the grass for like two hours so we could not leave the building safely. Um, other things, uh, we've seen crazy stuff. Uh, was there when a guy took over the visitor center uh, with a pistol, uh, a 
again, not having a good time, uh, a young man uh, on vacation and held uh, people hostage for most of a day, uh, which uh, it ended uh, safely. Uh, he gave up and uh, he would let people go every so often. And I knew a lot of the people by then. This was probably in the early 90s, like 92 or so. And uh, uh, those were some crazy uh, and kind of tragic things uh, that happened. Uh, I met uh, Bill Clinton, came there with his family, got to shake his hand and uh, videotaped his whole arrival speech he gave. Uh, met Jimmy Carter was upstairs in the Old Faithful Head on the roof and I knew he only had one way to come out of there so I stood there and uh, got to meet him and shake his hand. Uh, President Obama came through uh, 2009 I think it was. Um, that'd be right. Um, and uh, I waited and waited uh, in the ice cream shop below the uh, Old Faithful Inn and the rumor was he was going to come in and they had searched the place with dogs and evacuated everybody but they wanted people in there when he came in so they invited and searched people as they came in and, uh, and he did come back and, uh, with his daughters and uh, Got, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I can't remember the ice cream. I think it was uh, a rib, uh, chocolate runs through it or something like that. One of the Wilcoxons yeah. ice cream. He was very friendly. I, I caught him going out the door again uh, and said a few words. And very pleasant guy. Awesome. So those were three kind of neat events. I met just a lot of great people of, uh, you know, from other potters or from Thailand and places like that. Uh, my work is all over the world uh, from being there. Uh, some people from the Netherlands uh, gave me a little bird whistle, a ceramic bird whistle, and I sent them a little ver version of that uh, back to them uh, later after I got home. Uh, just some you know, people on vacation are usually uh, enjoyable people. They're trying to have fun, and it's a great place to work uh, for the most part, unless something's going wrong and with your hotel room or something. Um, the pottery uh, end of things was always uh, pleasant. And uh, uh, what else? Craziness. I mean, there were a lot of incidents. Saw some great northern lights there. Wow. Uh, all my children. Uh, Work there at 15. If you were, your parents were there, you could work. So I put them to work fairly early in life, uh, scooping ice cream or uh, hosting at uh, restaurants. Uh, and they all moved up uh, somewhat and uh, worked there through 18 year olds. Um, at the time, you know, they didn't want to leave Bozeman and go up there for two months in the summer, but. Looking back on it, they realize uh, it was a pretty unique situation to grow up there and meet people from all over the world and uh, make friends from all over the country and all over the world. Yeah, I had the name before I worked in the park, uh, Firehole Pottery. Uh, I didn't want to do like uh, something mountain this or mountain that. Uh, and I wanted more than just my name. Um, but the Firehole is often referred to in old uh, books uh, of wood-fired kilns. The fire hole or stoke hole is what you throw the wood in, um, in a wood kiln. And I like that, you know, it made sense. Uh, I do gas firings, but uh, at the time I was also doing, playing around with some wood-fired, wood-fired raku kilns. And uh, um, it's not really a production type process because it's uh, so labor intensive to throw wood in a kiln for hmm. one to two to three days depending on the type of kiln. Um, but that's where the, the word viral came from. Hmm.